reviewed the general interface of the system, looked at locations of functions. Now let's perform the simple operation to see how the technological process in Sprutcom is programmed. We are on Simulation tab now. Let's go to Machining tab and see what do we have now. I mean we have the CNC machine loader. If we switch equipment, select the Machine tab, select the Generate 3 axis milling machine, then in the process we'll only see our part and tool. We'll not see the machine scheme, but in this example we'll choose the real CNC machine. Double click on the machine and on the second tab we select some Traxxas machine just so that we can see and understand where we have the part regarding to the CNC machine table. The first thing we do is select the equipment then switch to the model tab by default the cursor is already on the part tab. That means that Sprutcom is waiting for the part to be loaded. When we start Sprutcom the cursor is usually located on this tab. Press the import button, select a standard directory, for example 2.5D, and here choose a part with the name part1 from IGS formats. Here we can also see which formats are available. The most common are for example IGS, STL, Postscript, DXF, STEP, etc. In this case we are interested in part1. I'll select part1 and click the open button. OK. Here we have the part loaded. If we select the catalog with elements of the part in the tree, we can see from which elements the part consists of. Here we have points and curves as well as separate surfaces. Here we can use the filter that we watched in the first part of this video. For example, if we enable the ability to select only curves, you can select separate curves. These curves are located in the model, means they were created by the designer in the process of designing this part. For example, if we enable the visibility of separate surfaces, only separate surfaces are available for selection. They can also be selected in the list respectively. They are highlighted in the window. That's what these filters are for, to be able to select one or another element. We've loaded the part. We will not load a separate 3D model of the workpiece and any snappings, tags, clamps, as we'll consider them in subsequent lessons. Let's go to the machining tab and see how our part is located. It's located inside the table, because it was built in negative directions of the coordinate system. If the designer created it in the positive direction of z-axis, then it would be located on the top of the table. If we turn off the visibility of the machine scheme, then we can see that our system automatically set the workpiece based on the maximum dimensions of the part along the axis. Of course, we always can set a custom workpiece. First of all, we can import it by setting a cursor on the workpiece and pressing the import button. Or we can select any of the proposed primitives as the workpiece and adjust any parameter of it. Let's go back to the first settings tab and turn on the machine. We need to put the part and the workpiece on the top of the table of this machine. To do this, select the workpiece setup, press the button with three dots and move along z-axis. You can change the values using the mouse wheel or you can enter manually. For example, let it be 100 mm. Click OK. Now we have moved the part and the workpiece to the top of the table. OK. What should we do next? We already have a part. There is a workpiece which is set by default by the system. There is G54. That is, the binding is also set by default. By default, it's the same as the designed coordinate system. And now we can create an operation. For example, choose Create Roughing Waterline Operation, press Create. The tool has appeared. 
and even now we can press start and we'll get the toolpath. It's highlighted in green. For better visibility we can set the thickness of this path means we can make it thicker so it's more observable. We loaded the part, we lifted it onto the machine table, pressed the start and now we already have a toolpath. This is a big advantage that we don't need to fill a large number of parameters before we get any result of the path. We see the path and something might not suit us. For example, a step by Z. It's quite big here. We can fix it all later. So we looked at the finished path, determined things we are not satisfied and begin to adjust the created operation. Select the tool, set the modes, correct the removal along Z-axis, correct the approach along the arc if necessary. We always see the result in simulation and how the material will be removed. To do this, switch to the simulation tab. Here we include the machining result visibility. Here we see our part. Here is our machine scheme and tool. Let's make the speed of simulation a bit less. And here I'd like to add that there are several simulation modes. They are Solid, Voxel 3D, Voxel 5D and Rock Solid. Let's look at the example of Voxel 5D. It's fast enough and high quality. Press Simulation. It can be noted that in those places where the tool touches the material, the color changes so that we can imagine where, at what stage, at what operation, and with what tool a particular element is machined. As you can see here our block lights up on the z-axis, most likely at this machine. Z-axis doesn't allow the spindle to fall lower. In this case we need to either choose a longer tool or set an additional holder. That's what the machine scheme is for. Return to machining tab. Here we see that there are borders registered in the scheme. Now we can observe that we move the table along x-axis and at some point it starts to turn red. That means that we go beyond the limit switches of the circuit. Each machine has its own limits on the working parts. As you can see along z-axis it also turns red at a certain volume. We can avoid this error. Here we see an exclamation mark. This can always be corrected. For example, to make setting of the part higher means to add some kind of fixture. Double click on operation. This is our tool. It has a length and we'll choose a holder for it from the standard ones. As you can see, the holder increases the tool overhang. Press run. In our case, we'll lock this distance. Let's go back to the machine scheme. Select the workpiece setup and for Z, set for example 120mm. Let's check. Press yes and run. See where is the error now. This can be seen at the modeling stage right here. An exclamation mark is set. Hovering the mouse point on the operation, we'll see information about the error. It's written contact with model on rapid fit. Good. Actually, for this we need a modeling mode in which we can understand what is going wrong here and correct it. Switch to machining. Stand on operation. Double click on the operation. In the parameters there are approaches and retract. This is our third tab, lead in, lead out. Let's make an approach by the arc. OK. Now calculate the operation. As you can see now it's ticked. Go to Simulation tab, press Reset and Run. As you can see now we have no mistakes. Thus we are machining. What can we fix else? As already mentioned we created the operation spontaneously. The tool was selected by the system by default from the library that is currently connected. You'll have your own tool, your own parameters and cutting speeds. Let's fix one more parameter, for example, the height of removal material. Open the options. Here we have parameters tab. By default we have 25mm for one layer. 
change this value to 5. So we'll have 13 layers. The system recalculated based on the workpiece. Click OK. Run. The toolpath is calculated. Now the distance between the layers is 5 mm. Switch to simulation. Reset and run smooth modeling. You can always click simulate all and see the result of machining. Look now, when the scheme works, the part is moving relative to the tool. The tool is in place. If you turn off the visibility of the scheme, then we'll observe our workpiece and the tool that moves around it. That's all. Now we have created the simple separation, changed a couple of parameters and obtained the processing of our detail. Later, of course, we change the parameters and adjust what, to what we need. This is how the system works.